Good morning, this is your Stat Sensei, Mr. Spensei, and we're looking at 2018, question one. So the manager of a grocery store selected a random sample of 11 customers to investigate the relationship between the number of customers in a checkout line and the time to finish uh, the checkout. As soon as the selected customer entered the end of a checkout line, data were collected on the number of customers in line who were in front of the selected customer in the time in seconds until the, long, until the selected customer was finished with the checkout. The data are selected in the following scatter plot, are shown in the following scatter plot, along with the corresponding least squares regression line and computer output. Um, so here we go, we're taking a look at the computer output and we should be looking for the constant. And that tells me that's my y-intercept. So this entire line right here refers to the y-intercept. And this entire line right here refers to the slope. So this right here will be my y-intercept. That'll be my slope. And this right here will be my x. I'm gonna take a moment before I answer the question. They didn't ask me to write a linear regression line, so don't do it if they don't ask you to. But just as review, y hat equals 72.95 plus 174.4x. Now, if you write it like that, you must define your y and x, and I'm not going to take the time to do it. However, you write it like this, where checkout time equals 72.95 plus 174.4 times the number of customers in line for your X, then you've defined your variables and you're good to go. You don't have to redefine them. So 72 point, uh, identify and interpret in context the estimate of the intercept for the least squares regression line. Well, 72.95 is the predicted amount of time in seconds that it would take to complete a checkout if there were zero customers in line. All right, so this right here, correctly identifying was the first part of this. You needed to use the word predicted, estimated, on average, that had to be included. And then we needed to make sure that we had it in context. Time in seconds that it would take to complete a checkout if there were zero customers. And you must mention those time in seconds and zero customers, right? If you didn't have those, you were gonna get partial credit. So two of the, you have basically three different things that had to happen. You had to say, identify the actual y-intercept, 72.95, right next to the constant. And then we had to make sure that it was, we said the word predicted or estimated, or on average, we'd expect it to take this long. And how, what, the amount of time, in seconds for zero customers. Well, that would be section one. And if you got two of the three, you got a partial. If you had all three parts, you got an E. The next thing, oh, while we're here, let's go ahead and talk about a couple more things. This is S. This is the standard deviation of the residuals. All right, so that right there is the standard deviation of residuals. And it tells you um, the amount of variation in time you would expect for a given number of customers. And then finally, we have our R squared. This is our coefficient of determination. We really don't discuss that there in, in this class. Um, so our R squared adjusted is just there as a distractor. Please remember, this is my T statistic, which is found by taking the slope divided by the standard error of the slope. So T equals B over SB, all right? And then of course, don't forget, if we have 11 customers, because this is a regression, degrees of freedom is N minus two, or in this case, 11 minus two. Again, they did not ask those questions, but I thought I'd go ahead and take a moment to explain them. This is the probability of getting a T statistic this extreme. And remember, we're based on this, were not equal, where our slope or our, our null hypothesis is beta one equals zero, HA beta one does not equal zero. So this is a two-tailed test. 
And remember, beta one equals zero means there's not a linear relationship, and this means there is a linear relationship. And you can't just say there is not a linear relationship. You'd have to say there is not a linear relationship between the amount of time in the checkout line and the number of customers. All right, so make sure you have it in full context. All right, if they were to ask those questions, but they didn't hear. So next thing says identify and interpret the in context the coefficient of determination or the R squared. Well, when I say they shouldn't, I mean I'm surprised they said R squared. I'm surprised they just didn't say coefficient of determination. Well, that's right here, 73.3. And by the way, so R squared is the coefficient of determination and it equals 73.3%. That's my first part. A 73.3% of the variation in checkout time in Y can be explained by changes in the number of customers in line. That's X. All right. So that's essentially my definition, which was the second part. And then it was in context. All right. I had to have all three parts, two of the three would only give me a partial. Now, let me explain how this could have been done partially. We could have said 73.3% of the variation in Y can be explained by changes in X. That would have been the definition, but not in context, and that would have gotten me partial, assuming I had the 73.3% correctly identified. All right, moving on to, and that was the end of section two. Moving on to section three, one of the data points was determined to be an outlier, circle the point on the scatter plot, explain why it's considered an outlier. All right, there is our outlier. Well, why is it an outlier? Well, it's an outlier because relative to the other data points, it's in the wrong place, all right? It's a long way away. It has a really great big residual. Now, if this has a residual, but this one relative to the others has an extremely large residual or is extremely different. So the highlighted point is an outlier. Okay, I correctly identified the outlier. That gives me a point, or that's part of it. Because the observed checkout time is significantly less than the amount of time predicted relative to the other data points. All right, I needed to say something along those lines or because it had a, a large um, re residual relative to the other data points. So make sure you include that, all right? And it occurred when there were three customers in line. But if I had this and that, that would give me full credit. Um, if I only identified the correct point, but with a weak response, I got a partial, um, but without, uh, um, but I, but to get full credit, I needed to say, it, um, it was significantly different relative to the other data points or compared to the other data points, right? So relative or compared, all right? So that would be section three. And in this case, E, E, E got you a four. E, E, P in any order got you a three. Then, of course, we get to the crazy E, E, I, E, P, P, E, P, I, or P, 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 got you a two, P, P, or E, I, I, got you a one. All right. Hope that helps and look forward to seeing you on the next one. Thank you.